Hello everyone. So today we're talking about an AI model that I haven't previously discussed on this channel, but this is a model that you absolutely do not want to miss. And it's offering incredible features for free, features that rival some of the top platforms like Claude and ChatGPT. And this model is called Mistral AI. They also use LeChat when they're talking about their model. So if you scroll down and look at what's new with LeChat, you'll find that you have access to the latest model. You have access to web search with citations, which is currently available in ChatGPT and Perplexity not with Claude. You have access to Canvas, which is only available with the paid chat GPT. You don't get that Canvas feature with perplexity and it's only limited with Claude, but you have that in the chat. You have access to image generation, again, which is a feature offered by chat GPT not by perplexity, not by Claude, and it's available in the chat. Image document analysis, which you get with ChatGPT, with a paid version of perplexity, with Claude, and also with the chat. As you can see, quite a lot of new features that are being offered by the chat completely for free, and you have access to them right now. So in this video, we're going to be looking at how to use these powerful features by the chat through a practical demonstration. And in order to get started, what we need to do is go to the chat button in here at the top and I'm going to click on that and then it will ask you to sign in but once you've signed in this is the interface that you're going to see so you're going to see that there's three options here you can click on canvas so that you can start using that or you can use the web search function or you can use the image generation function what you'll notice is that you have to click on it to activate it and then click on it again to deactivate it to use another feature so we're going to start off with canvas and what I'm going to write here is write three paragraphs on the impact of of AI on employment. I have the Canvas feature activated and I'm going to enter that. And what you'll notice is that it opens this left hand side panel like we have in ChatGPT and it starts to write that essay or these paragraphs for me. And then similar to what we have with ChatGPT Canvas, I can select part of the text. I'm just going to add here, add an example. And you can see that on the right hand side, it's now documented the request that I've asked it to. And you can see that it's actually given me an example here. And then I can come to another section as well. Again, similar to ChatGPT Canvas. I'm going to say, change this to bullet points. Okay, and again, you can see that it's formatted. So you'll find that most of the features that you have on ChatGPT Canvas are available here on the chat as well. And the other thing that you can do is that I can come back here and give an instruction to create a seven slide PowerPoint presentation based on this text. And what you'll see, it's now in the Canvas creating my PowerPoint presentation, the different slides that I want. And again, because this is Canvas, I can actually make changes within this. So it's now created the presentation for me. And if I come up here to this preview button, what I can do is I can actually start to see that presentation that it's created as a preview. So I can go through the different slides. And what I can actually do as well is that if I'm not really happy with the content of that slide, I can just come here and say, add an example. And what you'll see is that it's actually changed it in Canvas and it's also changed it in the presentation as well. And once I'm happy with that final presentation, I can come up here to that export button and then export the entire presentation. And you can see in just one click, I now have my presentation, a full PowerPoint presentation that I can start to work with. So this is an incredible way to work with your text and then transfer it into a PowerPoint presentation really quite quickly. So this is the first part of what you can do with Mistral AI. I'm going to go back to my homepage now. And for the next demonstration, I want to show you its web search feature. So I'm going to deactivate Canvas. I'm now going to select web search. And then I'm going to ask it a question to see whether it's able to extract quite recent information off the internet. So I'm just going to say, what is the price of Bitcoin today? And you can see, as with ChatGPT, it says it's searching the web. Okay, so you can see it's come back with the price of Bitcoin today, January 20th, 2025, is approximately 101,696 US dollars. Earlier today, it surged to an all time high of 109,350. If we look at the sources here, it's come up with two sources. So we've got the coin market cap. And if I click on that as well, we can see that it's 108,000. 
at some point it was 101,000. So if we go back to the chart, at some point on the 20th of January today at 7.40 a.m., it was 101,000. So it picked up the result from a few hours ago. So we can say it is quite updated in terms of the uh, results that it's giving us. And it's come back with two sources that are quite accurate. So it's done quite a good job with the search. Okay, so let's try another question. I'm just going to add the question here that says, give me the latest statistics on the impact of AI on employment. So again, it's searching the web, it comes back with, here are some of the latest statistics on the impact of AI on employment. And it tells us that exposure to AI in the workforce in 2022, 19% of American workers were in jobs highly exposed to artificial intelligence. So let me look at the source that taken this from. Okay, so it's extracted information from the Pew Research Center, which is a really good source to be looking at information. And I've got 19% of American workers were in jobs that are the most exposed to AI, which is the accurate information. If I'm looking at global impact on employment, again, it's got, according to the IMF, almost 40% of global employment is exposed to AI. And if we look at the source again, we can see that it's taken it from the IMF blog. And it's taken the accurate information, which says AI will affect almost 40% of jobs around the world. So as you can see, it's structured the information really well. It's come back with the key statistics that I wanted. It's actually laid it out in a really good format um, that is easy to use. And it's given me the sources for all the information that it's extracted. It does an amazing job with searching and extracting information from the web. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna be looking at is how it does with summarizing a research article. So I've uploaded an article here and I'm just gonna add a prompt here that says, summarize this article and provide me with the key insights. Okay, so if we look at the output, the first thing we'll notice is that it does take quite a few minutes to come back with the response. So it's not as fast as what you'd get with ChatGPT and Claude, for example. But if we look at the output, what you'll notice is that it's given us a very good overall summary. And then if we look at the key insights, the way it's structured and the information that it's come back with is actually really, really quite good. So we've got here the historical context and evolution, the applications in healthcare, and it goes through all the applications that the article has mentioned with a brief description of each one, the role of medicine. You can see that there's clear sections in terms of the insights and clear headings for each section. And if we look at the overall response as well, it is quite detailed and a lot more than what you'd usually get with the first response from ChatGPT, for example. So I'm quite happy with this response. Now let's see how it does with extracting information from figures in an article. So again, I'm going to give it a prompt here that says, give me an overview of all the figures in the article. And if we go to the actual article and look at the figures, you can see here figure one is the number of PubMed index publications on AI in medicine. So it's accurately extracted that and it's given us the description. This figure shows a bar graph depicting the number of PubMed index publications from 2001 to 2023 and an insight that there's a significant surge in the number of publications over the years. If it's given us information on figure two, three, four, five, and let's just check that it has extracted all the figures from the article. So this is figure five, and that is the last figure in the article. So actually done, again, a very good job, not only in summarizing the article, giving us insights, but also it has good ability to read information from different figures in an article and come back with an analysis and insight of these figures. So the next thing we're looking at is how it does with the image generation capabilities. So I'm going to select image generation and I'm going to add the prompt here that says generate an image of a boy reading in an old library. You can see now it's generating the image. And you can see it's come back with a very good picture. The boy is reading a book, but you can see the detail of the library in the background, the lighting, the old library effects. So I think it's done a very good job with this image generation. Okay, so I'm going to add the second prompt here that says, generate images of three options for a product mock-up of a new fashionable water bottle. Okay, so you can see it's come back with three different options. We've got the first one here, it says Hydroflow. We've got another one with these dark blue shades, and we've got another one with an A on it. So they do look quite basic, but you can see the prompt was quite a straightforward prompt. You can imagine with a bit more prompting, you'd be able to get some really good looking mock-ups. And I don't think it's done a bad job with what it's come back with. Okay, so the next thing I'm looking at is its ability to analyze information from a table. So I've extracted this information from this table and I've added it into Mistral AI. And I'm gonna say, analyze the table and provide me with the key insights. 
Okay, so again, we can see that it's actually been quite comprehensive in the way it analyzes the results. It tells us the table presents the best results over 30 runs on test data from different models. Able to extract that information from the table, talks about the model performance, and then the R2 values are described here. It talks about the consistency across medicines, and it tells us that the best performing models, the ensemble model, is highlighted as the best performing model with the lowest average RMSE on test data. And if we look at the analysis in the actual paper on table five, it tells us that the ensemble model performed the best among all the models for both the medicines on the test data. And it actually gives us the exact same overall results that we got with Mistral AI. So this is definitely a model that you can use to help and aid with your own analysis. And we can see that it's actually quite detailed in the response that it's given as well. So this is another AI model that's completely free that gives us some additional features that we can only find with the page model for chat GPT. And it's just amazing how we now have so many options from DeepSeek, from Mistral, from Claude. And it's just great to be able to try all these different models and find the best one for our case. So I hope you found this video useful and I hope to see you in the next video.